My name is Abigail and I'm a ninth grader at Kamehameha Schools. My name is Anna and I'm a ninth grader at Kailua High School. And my name is Andrew and I'm a seventh grader at Trinity Christian School. Welcome to Kiddo Connections. Where we connect with our kapuna. Through snacks, stories, and songs. Today we'll be making an over-the-top banana pop. See you in a few. And we'll read poems, including one by the author A.T. Alibi. I can't wait. And we'll learn versions to Hello My Baby. I can't wait. All of today's snacks, stories, and songs are themed on the word of the day, ohana. Ohana means family here in Hawaii, as Stitch would probably say, and it is something that is really close to our hearts because we all love our kapuna and friends, and we don't want to let that go. So Tutu, are you ready for a tasty treat? Take, take it away, Abigail. Aloha Kiddo Connection, Ohana. Today, I'd love to share a simple and fun for the whole family snack. I call them over-the-top banana pops. We'll only need a few ingredients for this totally appealing classic. <laughs> Get it? Appealing? You're going to need bananas, chocolate, and your choice of topping. Today, I have sprinkles, chopped pecans, and coconut, but you can use whatever you prefer. You're also going to need some sticks, a baking sheet, and some wax paper. I love this recipe because it's something you can do with your entire ohana. In fact, I make these banana pops with my own ohana, and we have so much fun. First step is to take a ripe banana, peel it, then cut it in half. Bananas are full of some amazing vitamins. They have vitamin B6, which helps to support our nervous system, vitamin C to help boost our immune system, manganese to protect our skin from damage, and of course, potassium to help maintain a healthy heart and blood pressure. After you've cut your banana in half, take a stick and put it through the flat end of your banana. See, it's already a banana pop. Place these banana pops in the freezer for at least 15 minutes. Now, during this time, we'll melt our chocolate. I've chosen to use dark chocolate today to keep our banana pops nutritious and healthy, but you can use whatever chocolate you prefer. It's easy to melt our chocolate in the microwave. Put it in the microwave for 30 second intervals. Stir and repeat until melted. Once your chocolate is melted, like what I have here, it's time to take our banana pops over the top. Take your frozen banana and dip it into the chocolate until covered. I'll be making a few today. Hey Anna, Andrew, what do you guys like to dip in chocolate? I like to dip pretzels. I like to dip strawberries in chocolate. It's very delicious. Nice, that sounds amazing. So, just dip it like this. Super fun and easy. Just like this. Once your banana is covered, it's time for my favorite part. We take our banana pop over the top. This is my favorite part because everyone in Dohana can really make it their own. I like to put coconut on mine, so I'll be putting coconut on it. But my grandma loves this with chopped pecan, so I'll be making one for her. And my mom loves this with sprinkles, so I'll be making one for her too. This is amazing because everyone in the Ohana can really use their imagination and make it their own. Speaking of Ohana, one more quick joke. Why don't bananas get lonely? Because they hang out in a bunch. And I think that's the amazing thing about Ohana. Spending time together and making meaningful connections. With Ohana, we are never alone. Well, there you have it. Over the top banana pops. Wishing you and your Ohana good health and positivity. So Tutu, are you ready to hear a few poems? Take it away, Anna. Today, I will be reading a few poems about the theme of family and our ohanas. This first poem is about how time can be short and you don't always have as much time as you think you might to be with people and how you need to appreciate what we have while we have it. This poem is called Make It Count. It is written by A.T. Alibi, that friend, would you two have had more fun if you knew how long he'd be gone? That possession, would you have allowed others to borrow if you knew it, you'd lose it tomorrow? That stranger, would you have helped to ease his pain if you knew you would meet again? Those kids, would you have held them dear years ago if you knew how fast they'd grow? That neighbor, would you have tried to say goodbye if you knew he was going to die? 
Life is volatile. Time is short. And better is, is the smallest deed any day than the greatest intention tucked away. Make it count. That was about making every interaction count, and it's a very touching thought, because when you think about it, sometimes we don't realize how much something means to us until we lose it. So we want to make everything count when it does. The next poem is called The Stick Together Families. It's written by the author Edgar Guest. The Stick Together Families are happier by far than the brothers and sisters who take separate highways are. The gladdest people living are the wholesome folks who make a circle at the fireside that no power but death can break. And the finest conventions ever held under the sun are the little family gatherings when the busy day is done. There are rich folk, there are poor folk, who imagine they are wise. And they're very quick to shatter all little family ties. Each goes searching after pleasure in his own selected way. Each with strangers likes to wander, and with strangers likes to play. But it's bitterness they harvest, and it's empty joy they find, for the children that are the wisest are the stick-together kind. There are some who seem to fancy that gladness for which they must roam, that for smiles that are the brightest they must wander far from home, that the strange friend is the true friend, and they travel far astray, but they waste their lives striving for a joy that's far away. But the gladdest sort of people when the busy day is done are the brothers and sisters who together share their fun. It's the stick together families that wins the joys of earth, that hears the sweetest music and finds the, sweetest, and finds the finest mirth. It's the old home roof that shelters all the charm that life can give. There you find the gladdest playground and the happiest spot to live. And oh, wary wandering brother, if you contempt you win, you would win. Come back into the fireside and be comrade with your kin. That was a very sweet poem. It's about how much family means to us and how sometimes you get upset and you don't want to be anywhere really near your family, but then you realize how important your family really is, for you, is to you. So, are we ready to dance? Let's, thank you for listening to the poems. Now let's, let's take it away, Andrew. Okay, thank you, Anna. Hello, Capuno. Thank you for joining me this segment to learn a dance that you may know called Hello, My Baby. So, I know that you guys are eager, so let's get right into it. So, the first step is you want to get your right hand and you want to wave it twice to the right. And while you're doing that, you want to add two steps. So, it will look like this. And then, you are going to do the same on the left side. And then, right after you have that, you're going to get your left hand and then you're going to wave it once. And then, you're going to do the same thing on the right side. And then right after that, you're going to do a big circle. And then you're going to go right back down, hands by your side. When you're going to do that, and then you're going to do a box step. And I'll show you just how to do that. So first you want to step with your right, cross over with your left, step back with your right, and end back up in your normal position with your left. Right after you have that, um, well, you can snap or clap while you're doing the box step, whichever you prefer. And then we're going to move into the next step, is you're going to put your hands over your hearts. And you're just going to sway side to side four times. And then there's one last step at the very end, but let's review all the steps we learned so far. So first, want to go to your right. So step and step, step and step, wave, wave, and big circle. Then you're going to go box step. And then hands over hearts, and we sway four times. And then our finishing pose and our last instruction is you're going to get your right hand and you're going to wave high like you're waving to someone. And that is your finishing position. So, Kapuna, are you ready to try with music? Let's do it. That was amazing, you did wonderful. 
And on the topic of dancing, Kapuna, when was the last time you jumped up and danced with family and friends? Thank you for joining me and we hope to see you again soon. Mahalo for joining us today for Stacks, Stories and Songs. We hope we were able to bring some joy into your homes and hearts. Remember, us kiddos are thinking about you and hope to connect again soon. My name is Abigail. My name is Anna. And my name is Andrew. And this has been another episode of Kiddo Connections. Aloha!